What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we are back to take a look at some of the Lions' defensive plays against the Chicago Bears last week. This team ran the ball a ton. They gave us some problems defensively. We're going to take a look at some of those plays. But also, the final injury report for both the Giants and the Lions is here for Sunday's matchup. So let's get it started. Fired up. It's made a great decision. Great teammates, coaches, and other people who want to be Super Bowl champions. And we are. We're going to do it this year. And we're going places. Because we want to go places. Touchdown to Craig Lyon! Before long, where are they going to be the last one standing? Welcome everybody to a video. Glad you guys are here and we're excited to be back, man. I'm excited to be back. I don't know who we are. I mean, you guys too. Are we excited to be back? I don't know. It's Friday and today we have the final injury report. That's always fun. It's it's usually fun unless it's bad news and it's not fun and it's just disappointing. But today, I feel like there was some pretty good news. There's one guy that I'm kind of like, okay, what's going to happen here? Actually, there's a couple guys like that. So we're going to start with that first. And then we'll take a look at some of the All-22 clips defensively. My plan is to make this shorter than the offensive video, less clips. But we're going to look at some good, some bad. Not everything, because again, it would be super long. But just a few clips from that game. Let's start off with the injury reports for both the Lions and the Giants heading into this game. Now, I'm going to throw it on the screen. I've been trying to make this more condensed. That way, there's not so much going on. There's like three reports. Like, what the heck is happening? I'm trying to make it more condensed. And then I'll just explain certain things that you're seeing on the screen right now. So, this is for the Lions. Lions and for the Giants, this is for Friday. As you see, there are designations for both teams in, out, questionable, doubtful, all that kind of stuff. At the Lions, first off on top, Trinity Benson has been taken off of the injury report due to the fact that he has been placed on injury reserve for the Lions. Now, one little note of this as well is it does open up a roster spot. So that's something to keep in mind because you talk about a guy like DJ Chark who maybe could play this weekend. If DJ Chark could play this weekend, they would have to activate him off of IR, which would mean that he would have to have a roster spot available to fill. And with Trinity Benson on IR, there is a roster spot available for him to fill. So need to point that out potentially not saying he's going to play but if he if he can then there you go Trinity Benson being on IR allows that to take place with DJ Chark Dan Campbell said him and Josh Reynolds were both feeling better speaking on Thursday he said that for Josh it was just nice to get him out there and running because it was the first time in a while that he had been practicing we'll touch on that and then for DJ Chark he said he looked better on Thursday than he did on Wednesday but for both for both of those guys a lot was going to be found out today in today's practice and I guess how much they could do in practice if that is the case not great news there with Josh Reynolds as you're going to see in the middle he did not participate today he did have limited participation on Thursday it doesn't necessarily mean he's out for the game but it's very unlikely probably that he plays if he did not practice today for example, a guy like Josh Pascal, who they said was not going to practice today, he has also been labeled as out. So they were gonna, they said that we're gonna see tomorrow, but they've already listed him as out for the game. So for that, probably not great news with Josh Reynolds, which is unfortunate because again, for weeks now we haven't had a pure outside receiver, and I was hoping to at least get one of those back. But there is still hope that DJ Chark could potentially play this week. And Campbell said that he has been feeling better from Wednesday to Thursday. We just don't know what he did and how he looked in practice today, or if he practiced today. That will be the question. So we'll just find out when it comes to probably tomorrow. If they decide to activate him off IR, he's probably playing. First time since week three. Continuing, we have Frank Ragnow, who is questionable for this game. Dan Campbell's optimistic. He has no boot on that he will be able to play this weekend. Deshaun Elliott, this one wasn't really touched on. Not sure why. In concussion protocol, questionable. Limited participation once again. I'm very much so hoping that this guy can play. He did touch on, like, you know, guys got to be ready like C.J. Moore. But I would love to see Deshaun Elliott back out there. As Aaron Glenn said, he's a good you know, player in the paint. That's how he put it. In the box, in the slot. That's where he's been very valuable for us. You see it in the red zone. They almost utilize him like a slot corner in a lot of situations. And it allows Kirby Joseph, I think, to play a more natural position for him currently. And I think as we go along and as he grows, he'll be more consistent in some of those spots that Deshaun Elliott is currently playing. But for now, he is at his best, usually, when he's at a deep safety alignment. Not to say that he can't play, man, but he just gets some inconsistencies as he rolls down. But for Deshaun Elliott, he was kind of taking that role 
role, and without him, it switched a little bit, forced Kirby Joseph into a little bit more of the Deshaun Elliott role, and obviously it was not perfect last week. Charles Harris with a groin injury is out. He practiced on Thursday, but not today, so he's out for this game. It's bothering me that there's not a DNP on there, so I'm going to fix that. He's out for this game, which stinks because if you look back at last week and how we utilized some of our pass rushers starting to get these guys back, Charles Harris wasn't necessarily your starter last game, but you had flexibility where you could have Julian, Charles, Hutchinson, John Kaminsky all on the field at the same time and allowing the Lions to do some creative things to try to keep fields in the pocket but also get pressure which means that there's probably going to be a lot of Julian Okwara that we're going to see against the Giants this weekend uh, continuing down Taylor Decker he's going to play with rest uh, Chase Lucas is in if he is in Nelson is in I'm interested to see if he gets some snaps in place of Dan Skipper he's been out for a while and Dan Skipper has been that sixth offensive lineman when they've went to some of their jumbo sets I'm wondering if they'll start to mix in Matt Nelson this week I would assume though so that he could play some of that role. Kermit Rodriguez also questionable, but he's been full participation. I would expect, based on his participation report, that Malcolm's going to be available to play. Now, last week, the Lions got a lot of different guys mixed in. Not only did they mix in Derek Barnes, but they also mixed in Jared Davis, who I thought in limited snaps looked pretty good, and they got Anthony Pittman out there. They mixed in a lot of different guys at linebacker, but it would be nice to have Rodriguez back. Swift, he's going to be in, as well as Jamal Williams, who was listed for illness, I think, on Wednesday, but he's been full participation since that that time now onto the giant side of things Kayvon Thibodeau their top draft pick this year uh, with an illness he's expected to play they're optimistic that he's going to be fine he's going to be able to go Graham Gano now I don't believe that he was listed with a designation which usually means you're in certainty there being that he was I guess placed on this list on Friday but from what I'm gathering he's still going to be in with his illness but I guess that's just something that you'll have to see how he feels and Belton the safety he's questionable for this one now we have an offensive lineman here whose last name that I shouldn't even try you know what should I try it as a, as a, um, as a duo, as a do, that was even an attempt. I'm sorry. Look, someone's out there, Giants fan, he's mad right now. What was that? I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that dude's last name. If he was unable to play this week, they do potentially have a backup that could be returning. to play for the first time in the 2022 season. That's Shane, who has been practicing for weeks, but he's been on IR. So they could activate him off of IR. And he said, Brian Dable being that if he had to, that he would be ready to go for them. So that's something to keep an eye on if he can't play. Kenny Galladay, we all know who that is. He hasn't played a ton this season, but last week he did start mixing back in he took 26 snaps offensively he had two targets no receptions in that game but he is getting mixed in so don't be surprised if he's playing against the Lions this Sunday with Kenny Galladay who popped up with a hamstring injury they're optimistic that Kenny Galladay is going to be able to play this Sunday as well as Wandale Robinson you go a couple of down there with another hamstring injury he is listed as questionable but it sounds like he's going to give it a go so both those guys probably should be playing into this game from Darius Slayton another one of their receivers they also have Isaiah Hodgins who has been getting mixed in a little bit recently um, you also have Dexter Lawrence who is a really good defensive lineman he is dealing with a back injury he's questionable uh, Daniel Bellinger the rookie tight end with an eye injury is out for this week and then finally you have the rookie Evan Neal the offensive lineman who has missed the last few weeks he's doubtful to play it sounds like he's not going to play and in his place they've played Phillips uh, as the backup offensive tackle hasn't been great their guard play hasn't been perfect either but they do have a guy that's had experience there because for the last few weeks they've been dealing with that. So that is the Giants side. That's the Lions side. With that, let's dive into some of this All-22 from this past game against the Bears. Take a look at how the Lions performed against a lot of the run plays that they faced and also in the past a little bit. And then, of course, with having this Giants team coming up who, number one, they're going to run the football. We know that. This is a team that's fantastic. They're running the football 4.8 yards to carry, 164 yards per game. That's top 10 and top 5. They are fantastic at rushing the football. They have a lot of rush attempts. They kind of lean on the run game and you look at Daniel Jones he's only averaging 177 passing yards per game this season now they haven't put him in a lot of turnover worthy situations he has eight touchdowns to two picks but he also doesn't have a ton of passing yards but he has a high completion percentage meanwhile defensively Ben Johnson told us that this team was aggressive that's exactly what they are and he said that's something we're gonna have to be prepared for the New York Giants blitz more than anybody else in the league according to pro football reference at about 40 percent of the time they're blitzing so he brought up four third downs now, the run defense statistically has been pretty awful 5.5 yards per carry that's actually worse than the Lions that may surprise you but it is um, and their yards per game allowed is 24th allow a very low completion percentage 58% that's kind of rare that's second in the NFL so it's gonna be an interesting matchup they haven't had a lot of interceptions or takeaways in the back end but 
it's hard to complete passes, and they bring heat on third downs. So, again, talking about staying ahead of the chains, and the Lions are going to have to find a way to be consistent on those downs, and that's why you would love to have an outside receiver like DJ Shark back for this game. Or Josh Reynolds. I mean, hey, look, he can still play. I'm not counting the guy out. It just seems unlikely. So with that, let's take a look at some of this All-22 against the Bears. Aaron Glenn, who spoke to the media, one thing I loved is he called Jerry Jacobs a dog. He said it's good to have him back. He's a dog. He kind of broke down what he thinks each secondary player basically brings to the table. He said they were challenging in coverage in this game. And then according to Dan Campbell, we felt like they did pretty well containing a lot of their runs. It was just like a couple of breakdowns. There was really the one big breakdown that you had on the 67-yard touchdown run from Justin Fields, which we'll take a look at. And then also we had a breakdown in coverage, which was a 50-yard touchdown. Um, but again, there was also some smaller things that I think showed up here that allowed some chunks that, you know, 10, 9, 10 yards. That's still not ideal defensively, but it wasn't a big touchdown that you remember. What I thought was interesting is the way the Bears attacked us. They weren't attacking, you know, a lot like to the C gap. They were attacking outside. They were getting to the edge on us. They were attacking the D gap of our defense. They were really stretching us out defensively into this game. And this is early. This was their first drive. Here's an example of that. It definitely hurt them when they got like a holding call. There were some crucial holding calls. And I think the ones that I saw, they looked kind of legitimate. It's always hard to tell, but it looked pretty legitimate. With that, though, those were huge because then they got them some passing situations. I thought the Lions weren't bad against the pass, specifically in the back end. Now, again, they had a couple breakdowns, but I didn't think they were bad against the pass. I just thought sometimes they held the ball too long and that that can be an issue as well but we'll take a look at all that but I do want to start off with this I won't spend a ton of time they hit us with a jet sweep but I want to circle Julian Okora on this play because there's a play later where you will see him recognize that the jet sweep is coming in his direction get outside and shut it down for a loss of yards this one that's not the case all right there was seem to be no recognition across the board of this and you can see there's no movement and they end up picking up 10 yards on this play. Julian gets blocked up, then there's Okuda, and he picks up 10 yards with Alex flying over there to make the stop. But you will see later in the game how Julian recognizes it, and he actually ends up making a play. But that's how they were attacking us in this game, really all day long, and the Lions had to find a way to slow it down. Now, we did some things creatively defensively, which I do like. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Again, Jared Davis, this is, you know, he hasn't played much with us. And with Alex Anzalone, good communication, he flew through this. I thought Jared Davis looked good in the plays that he got, and maybe He'll continue to be mixed in. Who knows? They felt like this was the right game for him because of how much they run, which makes sense. But you take a look at where they are pre-snap, who's responsible for each gap, and then all of a sudden, you get this split zone type of look offensively. So he communicates with Jared Davis. Alex Antoloni gets up field. Then, of course, you have your defensive end, Josh Pascal, who's squeezing it down on the offensive tackle. That's how they handle that. And then the linebacker is going to spill out. Here's Jared Davis. And he's actually going to pick up this beneath route, cover it up really well. Mike Hughes had some safety help over top here. And then, of course, Jeff Okuda is just trying to chase down St. Brown on the play. But this was really well done by Jared Davis. I mean, he covered it up. He stuck with him a long time. And he kind of almost allowed Alex to get back in that play and make an interception. And then last second, he decided to go after Justin Fields and ended up breaking up the pass but he stuck with this for a long time usually this is just they break down he's a step behind it's an easy pass but in this case Jared Davis kind of takes away both on this one does really well and then to utilize his hands to go knock that down I thought that was a fantastic play and of course it set up a third down and then they just handed it off and they basically settled for a few goal but that was huge from Davis and especially with how little I mean he hasn't played with us this year you know, he hasn't played in the game this year. So to see him do that is pretty awesome. Neil fan, I, uh, Isaiah Bugs had some good good plays in there. I mean, he had some big-time key plays. He got some big-time pressures for us in this game. But I do want to showcase a little bit of Ali McNeil because, you know, that's just, I mean, it's what we have to do. We have to showcase the guy. So you see him fill his gap, and then Alex Anzalone has the A-gap that he can fill. Again, they put their safeties in the box, so they were all kind of one-gapping this across the front. But watch uh, Ali McNeil on this one. He basically takes up two gaps on this play. He has the B, B gap, stacks his guy up, and then sheds into the A gap, which is where the running back shows. And because of that, Alex fills. And then all of a sudden, they limit this to a two-yard gain. But that was just a good play by Ali McNeil. And you know I had to show that off early just because, you know, you know, I like Ali McNeil. Interesting. What the Lions did a lot in this game, and they did it with defensive backs as well. I mean, it wasn't just, okay, we're going with a, a linebacker instead of a defensive back in the slot here. In this case, it's Julian. We've seen the Lions do this. They did this against Green Bay a little bit differently. But again, the Bears don't use a lot, utilize a ton of receivers most of the time. So they do a lot of this. You got two backs in the backfield. You have a tight end, and you go two receivers. So they do a lot of like 21 personnel, as you see here. So the Lions have Julian Okora lined up in the slot. And what they did a ton of the time is they would blitz that slot guy off the edge. So it wasn't just Julian. 
Julian, it would be the slot if that was Will Harris. They would blitz that guy off the edge and utilize their safety to kind of come down, roll down, and then, you know, play coverage there if they were playing man. If not, they would just drop in a zone, which is this case, they end up dropping in a zone on this play. I got to believe part of the strategy, at first I was thinking they were trying to roll him a certain direction and make him uncomfortable. Like, okay, let's make sure that he has to throw rolling left. But you'll see it from both sides. I think the Lions were rushing for a couple reasons. First off, okay, it allowed them to help contain pass rush. They also did some things off it. It allowed them to kind of slant in the inside so everybody would slant in a gap and then you would have the rusher off the edge. So you really filled around the pocket of Justin Fields to try to contain him. Also rushed from his side, got an extra rusher. And I think some of the time uh, they were trying to kind of move Justin Fields away from those targets because, you know, they, know they like to do their rollouts. So they like to roll out to these two wide receivers. In this case, that's not what it is, but we've seen that. So they bring the rush, though, onto this play. Let's take a look. Juno Quara brings it off the edge, plays the run first, and then, of course, he's going to rush the quarterback. Lions dropping his zone in the back end. Now you're going to see many different examples of how the Lions utilize the rushing of the slot, how they fill their gaps. One definitely big thing is containing with this team. They're trying to get everything outside, so you need to have speed players that can contain, that can seal off the edge, and that was part of the reason. And also I think partly is that you're splitting the field a little bit in half if you can get pressure from that side. That way you could take away half the field that you have to contain the quarterback. But what I like is actually Josh Pascal. I think Josh Pascal makes a makes a little play here that may go unnoticed. I know Dan Campbell talks about the plays that you know don't really, you know, Put, produce a stat, but they're noticeable. I would think this is one of them. I mean, you see Josh Pascal continuing to battle here, and he actually ends up kind of containing Justin Fields on this play to allow Julian Okora to get home. So watch how Josh plays this. Of course, again, he's going to slant inside to open up this lane, and they could all fill their gaps. And then it allows uh, Derek Barnes to spill. Uh, on this case, you can have Josh Pascal, you know, kind of slant inside. Then because you're bringing five guys, you're bringing an extra rusher. Now Julian has the outside gap, and then Derek Barnes has a little bit more uh, range where he can kind of spill outside. They try to attack us to the edges. Now Derek Barnes can kind of take off and get out there. But in this play, watch Josh Pascal here working against their left tackle. Doesn't win initially but there's a little bit of a push get some separation with that right arm but continues to work sheds you can see him shed the tackle and then he gets back outside if he gives up on this play then Justin Fields might take off there but he actually contains forces it back in to Julian Okwara to finish off and get that you know to finish off his sack that he initially thought he had right here but look at that boom you see that contain that he has Isaiah Bugs is working but he just keeps working and allows Julian Okwara to finish off that play so this was the third down for the Bears and when the Lions got him in these situations which I don't think they did often enough but when they did they seem to have some success and it wasn't a ton of craziness they did except for the defensive line I thought they got creative and we'll show that but they're gonna run a cover one robber here they did bring some rushes they brought five man rushes usually when they did they didn't. I don't think they brought any more than that at all in this game so they robbed down Elliott he doesn't really have anybody so he ends up tracking down Justin Fields as he takes off on this play but it's good coverage I thought Jeff Okuda actually played some pretty consistently good coverage in terms of just separation allowed I don't know the advanced statistics on that but I gotta believe he didn't allow a lot of separation in this game as you see here he's all over Darnell Mooney I thought he did good he obviously had to pray pass break up later in the game on Claypool we'll take a look at that you got Mike Hughes in the hip here on that outside receiver and they said you know he can mix in his kind of nickel he's at third DB but in the slot has been Will Harris he's kind of been holding that down and he hasn't looked out of place it hasn't been perfect but it hasn't looked super out of place but to me what really sets this up of course and notice Chris Board is out there covering the running back so again third down usage but what really sets this up because all they do is they basically run deep curls to the sticks three guys run deep curls pretty simple they got flats they got deep curls it's very simple and then it's just like all right one guy can get separation at the top of his break that's where the ball's going and he probably has the primary guy but it's the pressure the lines create now I really like how they you know kind of set this up to create pressure I think they're accomplishing two things here first thing you see is they get more of their speed rushers on the inside pre-snap so you have Julian O'Quarr and Charles Harris now they could just rush those guys up field but what they're going to do is they're going to run a game they're going to stunt with John Kaminsky inside Aiden Hutchinson inside so that those two guys can work against guards which as we know that is a place where they can be very dangerous John Kaminsky is way better against guards than he will be at defensive end and Hutchinson has shown a lot of success against guards because he's so quick wrap around Charles Harris and Julian who you know a little bit more of your speedy guys around the edge specifically Julian Okora some of the twitch that he has and that's where he's going to be more successful winning so you see it here and also I think what it does is it kind of contains the quarterback plus they're trying to chip our ends so at that point if they're going to chip and we're just going to rush up field it's really going to slow down those rushers but what the Lions are doing here by playing this game they kind of take the chip out of the equation almost a little bit and then they stun around and I think what that also does is contain it can give fields maybe the sense that oh, I can get outside but then as they both wrap around it kind of closes it up and cleans it up and since they're playing man in the background we know rush lanes are super important in this game so you see them wrap around Julian and Charles come around here but then as John Kaminsky you had a 
extremely high pass rush win rate, and here was an example of that. It wasn't the prettiest thing, but he got through on the left guard on this play, and as you can see here, boom, creates the opening, pushes the guard in the side, and then he gets pressure, which is, you know, so quick that they actually don't get to run the depth of the deep curls before Justin Fields has to take off, and then again, they kind of have their guys out here, which are containing. Now, in this play, you're going to say, well, Charles doesn't get the contain, but he does get the holding call here on Braxton Jones, and of course, he ends up throwing it away as Elliott chases it down to the outside, so there's been some jet sweeps and things like that that have happened. Here's another example of what they do. They run a quarterback power towards the outside on this play. Now, What's interesting is, uh, first off, some dudes, I think the center, his, like, hand warmer or something flies off on this play. It's weird. I thought someone lost their shoe. It was very strange looking. You're going to see it. I, I really don't know what it is. I think my the defensive tackle here throws it off him. Yes, he threw something off of it. There are ways to attack it, so it always sounds good on paper. Let's just play man against this team. That's true, but it can give you some problems, too, because everybody's you know eyes are going to be on that receiver as soon as the ball is snapped, especially when they come out and gun like this, and that's what happens. Kirby Joseph matched up on this inside slot receiver. His eyes go right to the receiver, so he ends up just taking those few steps as the receiver just goes in to kind of pin down, pin and pull out here with the offensive lineman, that now he's out of position, and now all of a sudden you have an opening for Justin Fields to kind of just run right through. You kind of take a guy out of the play, and they challenged our guys on the outside that's just difficult and that was on a third down because you're definitely expecting pass on a third down you're going to see it here boom he jumps inside everybody kind of moves with the receivers and they pick up the first down on that play so here we go here's one of those zone drops from the Lions. they drop it to a tampa two which he Derek barnes is not in the game on this play Jared Davis kind of plays the Derek Barnes role. So I'm interested to see if they, you know, start using him after this week. But you can see he's kind of playing that role. He runs up the seam. We know he has some straight line speed, so he handles that. And really, the initial coverage here is fine. There's nowhere for Justin Fields to go with the ball initially on this play. But he breaks contain here on the side of John Kaminsky. This time, you don't get a lot of, you know, stunt work. And they don't have those kind of rushers on the field. But you get this Tampa 2 look defensively. Everything is covered up initially. There's this, like, slot fade that he could potentially throw here behind Jeff Okuda. But he kind of... He kind of works himself out of the pocket, I think, a little bit early here because there really wasn't any pressure. I don't know if he sensed it from Kaminsky or Hutch. I'm not sure, but he started to just leave. Uh, Kaminsky had an opportunity on it, but he missed a sack on this play, which is always difficult. And at this point, as things break down, if something breaks down his zone, there's going to be holes in zone. It's just... And man, if something breaks down, guys are going to take off. But in zone, there's always holes. There's going to be holes in zones. We missed the sack. He takes off. And then here, Will Harris kind of locks his eyes onto the quarterback, which understandably so. Could be thinking, hey, Fields might take off on this play. Everybody else kind of has to lock up with someone so you can see across the board. They don't do a bad job of that. They kind of find their guys. Okuda finds this guy. And they, they try to all latch on with someone as this play breaks down, which is fine. But... For Will Harris, as he starts to move with the quarterback, and then Justin Fields gets outside the pocket, by the time he sees the defensive lineman, who probably maybe could have contained on his own, maybe, then it leaves open that open space uh, for the receiver to just kind of sit down. So that play just went on way too darn long, but the initial coverage was good. Where some of the, the lane fills were kind of strange. Now, obviously, they shift the defense, so everybody shifts over a gap, so you can see how everybody is lined up, where Derek Barnes is responsible, what Alex uh, has, and then where Will Harris kind of comes into this. And for whatever reason on this play, I'm not really really sure he for some reason like attacks the receiver like if he just fills here he could have definitely helped us out but for some reason right here he turns I guess he thought that Herbert was probably gonna bounce so he's like let me get out there but that wasn't really necessary because you had a cornerback that was free on that side that was Jerry Jacobs because Jerry Jacobs receiver was actually gonna come and block Will Harris on this play kind of pin that down so I could see how Will Harris thought, okay, maybe he's bouncing here, let me jump outside, but it seemed sort of unnecessary that if he would have just, you know, got on field, he would have made the play, and then Jerry Jacobs was out there to kind of contain, but of course, and it, look, you have the contain here from Charles Harris, so this one, I'm not really sure why he did this, I guess that's the reason being, and it picked up 11 yards, but that's also a guy that really doesn't play that position. One thing I like from Julian in this play, you could see some of the contain, he didn't make the tackle there though, but Julian looks pretty good. I mean, he's athletic, we know that, he is scrappy, like the dude just keeps playing, he's battling. And on top of that, I think he gets smarter as the game goes on. I really do. I think he adapts to what he sees. Maybe that split zone look with Cole Komet, which kind of moves our linebackers. At the same time, they fill. So you're going to see Isaiah Bugs. I think he's the guy to circle here because he fills his lane really well. This A gap kind of forces some of the bounce, I think, on here. And then, of course, everybody else fills, but there's no crease for him to get through because Isaiah Bugs has some good control over that. But at the same time, you all see Aiden Hutchinson on this backside working against the tight end, and he was definitely challenged in this game. But you see Aiden Hutchinson, because of that drive into the backfield, kind of takes away the 
the inside zone, which is where this looks like it's designed to go, and it forces him to kick and bounce this outside. Bugs has his lane, and then of course Julian's out here, and then Jerry Jacobs with a great open field tackle to finish this thing off and limit that. Now this one I just have to show because this was like this thing. This thing is still awesome to watch. Okay, uh, you got Aiden Hutchinson off the backside here. They moved the tight end out of the play, so he's unblocked on this zone run. But look at. Look at Aiden Hutchinson, man. Come on, dude. Like, look at this. The Superman tackle is real. I had to show it. I got to show it because it's awesome. Also, someone else known as Jared Davis is in the game, of course, here with Derek Barnes, which I think is, I think it's smart. I This is a, another little thing I had to throw out there. So, I don't remember which game it was, but it's very early in the season. I think I also noticed it last year. Alex is a smart player, but in the red zone, I don't love the, you know, put the head down and just kind of nail somebody. Like, he can be a little bit kind of patient, a little bit calm, and, you know, Jared Davis, dude, he'll just, he'll just knock someone, knock someone out. I mean, he will, he just is that guy and same with Derek Barnes so I kind of like that and also notice Amani is in the game here I don't know if that's a size thing or what but Amani's in the game matched up on the tight end so I thought that was interesting so a couple personnel tweaks which can't say I hate but at the same time look at Hutchinson off this backside dude what the <laughs> Get out of here, dude. I just had to show that. That is that is awesome. Now, they do a pretty good job of not allowing this thing to get plowed into the end zone, so it forces him to hold up a little bit. You see Charles Harris here working on the tight end, but you see Aiden Hutchinson going crazy. That is... <laughs> That play is still sweet. Well, now what's not sweet is the touchdown that we give up on the very next play. Now, what I do love about this, as you can see communication, you see how they're stacked up, and it's all about communication in this part of the field, one yard out of the end zone. And I gotta say, Jerry handles this like a champ with Sean Elliott. They, they handle this together extremely well. Yes, it's the Sean Elliott who's lined up here uh, with Jerry Jacobs. Now, they do a little bit of a motion pre-snap here with Moody, and then they try to bring him back to get them into, you know, some trouble and mess up communication potentially. But Jerry Jacobs does a great job of course, we always know he's physical and he gets in the hip, which I think helps him a ton. There was another play where he got into the hip of the receiver and really there's no rub that's created because he kind of closes all that space. But the switch that they have here is very clean between the two, very well done, and it forces Fields to pull the ball down. That was clean. Got to show that. There was a good part in this game to force him to not throw that pass. However, the play just goes on too long and he ends up breaking the contain and then you get a touchdown. Now, Hodgson initially sheds and he attacks the quarterback, so he contains him inside, you can see there, forces him back to Bugs. Bugs does not clean up the play, kind of leaves his feet, does not finish the play. You can see Aiden Hutchinson over-pursues a little bit. You could probably say the same thing, honestly, about Alex Anzalone, because yes, okay, Hutchinson, you over-pursued, but if Alex is also, you know, contains a little bit more here, and he sticks on the outside instead of diving in just like Hutchinson does, then he would just run right back into Alex. Regardless, though, on this play, both the guys kind of get overly aggressive. He takes off, and he gets to the end zone, but there was actually, I think there was some good for sure to take out of that play. All of our guys kind of adapted to this look, okay? There was a play early in the game, and I think it actually might be later in the game, with Jeff Okuda, where they end up getting outside on him, because what they're doing with their receivers, and we saw this at the beginning of the year, so credit to the Bears for saying, all right, let's see if they can stop it. Well, they'll take their one outside receiver, mashed up one-on-one, -on -one with off coverage, and they're going to bring him in and kind of block down on someone. So maybe that's a linebacker, maybe that's a slot corner. In this case, there's no slot corner. So he's going to block down on the guy that's going to be racing out here to kind of kick it off and then leave you on an island with a cornerback who's giving up a lot of space that's what the running back wants is a matchup but on this play a couple things first off Julian this is why I talk about him kind of feeling it and sensing it out kind of sniffing it out he saw it earlier watch him on this play as he sees the fast motion come his direction for the jet sweep take a look at him start to move that direction he starts to feel it he doesn't go upfield at all he just starts to backpedal like oh I feel where this is going and he gets out there and contains extremely well the offensive linemen don't have a shot to get out to him and block him before he's behind the line of scrimmage cutting this thing off strings it out our cornerback Jerry Jacobs I believe this is he's able to dive down and make a play as this play is strung out you can see Derek Barnes is going to run through Mooney but you can see because he strings it out now it allows Jerry to help him get out there and it's a loss of one but the sense there the sense of Julian to kind of sniff that out was awesome. Let's talk about another thing that I thought was pretty awesome. This is here with Will Harris. So we saw the lane fill. I didn't think it was a perfect game against the run form. But what I'm really loving about Will Harris is the dude competes. He's very unafraid to attack guys. And like I always say he's a very smart coverage player. And I think that's what you see a little bit here. So they stack up both their receivers. They're going to run. They're going to have a Deep inside release, which Will Harris is going to pass off then to the guy that's in off coverage, as we always see. They're all playing leverage, you can see, um, on the inside here. So they're all playing outside leverage. So he's going to pass it off 
to the off coverage corner in this stack and that is Jerry Jacobs and he's going to have to take the underneath route but look at how he does it so boom he sees it go upfield who initially pre-snap is like oh he's mashed up with that guy but he releases upfield so Will sticks with him lets him go and then passes that off to Jerry Jacobs then he flips himself around and gets himself in a position to cover up Darnell Mooney. I know Hutchinson, I gave him the credit, I think, right after the game, but what Will Harris does here, you can see the communication pre-snap with Jerry, and I think that's part of it. Like, okay, if he releases upfield, I'm gonna switch that and pass it off to you. But you see him handle it here, right? Gets a little physical, then he lets go, no flag, flips himself around, and cuts off Darnell Mooney, who's just gonna run a quick out route. And then, it's all about Aiden Hutchinson, who kind of cleans it up. But Will Harris on that play stuck out to me. I was like, that was good, man. Off the line, that was really well done. And then, of course, again, yeah, Hutchinson, in using some of that speed to kind of not allow him to just run around the edge. Good change of direction, doesn't allow him to get around the edge and forces this ball to be thrown away. Take a look at the touchdown. I won't spend a lot of time. There's not a ton of time to spend on this anyways. They match up Kirby, who didn't look aware of it pre-snap. This is when Deshaun's out of the game, so CJ Moore is now in the game. So they switch it over. They get the matchup on Kirby, which I guess maybe they wanted that matchup. Maybe not. Either way, they get the one-on-one -on -one here. He's going to run up the seam. He kind of shows like he's going to stop and maybe break down. I don't know, maybe break out, shows that he's blocking a little bit potentially. And as Fields rolls that direction, the Lions have contained, but he just tries to grab, he just tries to get contact, he whiffs, and then he just walks right past him and catches the touchdown. That was way too easy. Clearly just a breakdown in coverage there from Kirby. So hurt during the game, and they had a couple big plays, which is not ideal. I guess at least it sped up the drive. I think that's what we said during the game, and it did definitely sped up the drive. So CJ Moore is now out there, and but this was just kind of a breakdown, looks like defensively. I don't know exactly who it's on, but I can tell you that this is just kind of a mess across across the field this is a mess defensively so they utilize the fast motion which definitely gives us a problem they got two tight ends on the right side one on the left they got the running back in the backfield of course mike is mashed up on this slot receiver but then the motion throws us off so what you're going to get here is potentially the matchups pre-snap could have been inside tight end outside tight end you know that could have been the matchups but with the fast motion jeff okuda is going to take darnell mooney out of that motion he's going to take him who's running like a swing route on this play cj moore who i think then understands his responsibility is probably shifting to this outside tight end who who ends up breaking across the field kind of going to like a split zone look and I think he ends up just sitting and blocking he passes that off seemingly to a lot to the linebackers I guess because he's ends up in no man's land Alex passes the underneath tight end who CJ Moore passed off to him seemingly to Derek Barnes on this play but Derek Barnes just attacks the quarterback because there's no route running and that means the one guy that's unaccounted for is the inside tight end because no one seems to communicate with that guy and he just runs completely clean CJ Moore is covering nobody on the play the linebacker Derek Barnes who I guess had the tight end attacks the quarterback because he's not going anywhere and then you also have Alex who's kind of just sitting underneath as well also confusion in the back end Kirby Joseph who sees that there's no one covering this tight end he peeps that out and he ends up taking the tight end who's dragging across the middle which could have been fine here as Mike Hughes has the other tight end who's releasing up the field but he switches that off to the safety he's like I'm gonna pass it off to the safety then I'm gonna take this underneath guy which you could see how that would make sense but again there's no one covering this underneath guy so they end up both covering this dude and then there's a free tight end there was a lot of confusion there I don't know exactly who it's on it feels like there's a lot of things going on that's just messed up in the back end but as you're gonna see it just causes a lot of chaos if Mike Hughes sticks with his guy upfield okay but again he's like looking like he's giving this off to Kirby that way he can drop them underneath and take this well Kirby is seeing that this guy's uncovered so he's diving down to take that and then of course Mike Hughes who I think they communicated pre-snap looked like they were going to switch EJ Moore who is in the box he's going to take the fast motion from the running back out of the backfield Montgomery on this play so he's going to take that then again here with Jared Davis watch Davis fill inside they slant their defensive linemen so now Hutchinson's kind of in that C gap and that allows Alex Anzalone to spill outside on this tight end help contain string it outside and then of course everybody's just battling there and they limit that to a short yard gain so that one was really well done this play we get a bunch offensively here and I think the Lions do really well in man coverage they don't switch anything but they get really good depth and they all end up being able to cover the guy that they're matched up with they're also going to bring a blitz match up the safety uh, CJ Moore down here with the running back but rushing that side if you can get Justin Fields to get outside to move to the left then of course it limits his options because everybody but he's on the other side of the formation. So I think that was part of it. But also, again, filling these rush lanes. You see Julian gets a little bit of a push here, gets a little bit of pressure. Hutchinson also chases him down. And then it kind of singles it out on the opposite side of the field with Alex Anzalone and this tight end. But you're going to see him at the bottom here. Look at them cover this up. Will 
Harris. Good depth here with Mike Hughes. Quick feet. He ends up taking this across the middle. And then Jeff Okuda has the out route. We've seen him do that a lot. Mike Hughes in a really good spot here, as well as Will Harris. And then it's one-on-one -on -one with Alex. And this was not his intended route. He, of course, broke this route off and took this thing upfield. He was running an out route, but he took it upfield. He was looking towards the bunch side, but the Lions got pressure on that side, putting some other extra bodies over there versus the other side. But then they also try to contain, and then you force it outside. So I think there may have been two things going on at once there. And they end up getting pushed here with Aiden Hutchinson, who forces him out of the pocket on that side, which is really nice. Kaminsky ends up kind of um, on this play actually containing, which is cool as well because Okora got a field. It seemed like the Lions were running games with two inside defenders, and if they got a free rush, they would go. But if not, they would kind of just float out and then basically contain each side. And Kaminsky did a good job of being aware of that and containing. And then, of course, he threw it up there deep. He gave him a shot, but it was incomplete. If defensively, because of the motion that you have, and everybody shifts to the correct lanes. And this time, you're going to see Will Harris is actually going to attack and fill his lane. And as you can see, he kicks it out to Hutchinson, who had the edge set on the tight end. And also, Jerry Jacobs just comes out of nowhere, basically flies down and makes this tackle. And I, I just love the way that he plays. And he's pretty good at wrapping up as well. But Will attacks here, takes up that lane, forces him to bounce. Hutchinson sets the edge and then here comes Jerry Jacobs to clean it all up. Now we'll take a look at this interception because this was huge. This is the pick six. The Lions brought a blitz on this play and they ended up dropping into what looked like a cover four drop defensively. So Will Harris cheats over. Kirby Joseph. Now they're in zone. They're in zone, right? So as we saw earlier, they were in zone when they when they uh, end up blitzing Julian Okora. They have done it for man as well, where Kirby will kind of roll down, but he doesn't roll. He stays at his too high spot. So on this play, they're dropping in a zone, but they bring this rusher off the edge of the two receiver side. I just think that's interesting. But then, of course, you end up getting the interception here. But like Dan Campbell pointed out, Isaiah Bugs, he got some really good pressure. He got a pretty quick shed, and he got some pressure. And then Hutchinson here on the tight end, you're going to see him. He's initially going to go by him and then stop. And as Justin Fields, I think, tries to, you know, look left and then come back right, get everybody moving that direction, pull the safeties. But as he does that, it allows Hutchinson to kind of replace and get back into his spot and take it away because, of course, he can't get, he's not going to get way downfield on this one. And then Jeff Okuda has opportunity to run it down. But I do think it was worth pointing out Isaiah Bugs on this one. Let's take a look at Isaiah Bugs on this play. See the pressure that he's going to get. He's going to get a pretty immediate shed here on the interior. Boom, right on the center. We talked about how he wins with that left hand going right on that left shoulder, going right by him right there. Boom. And then he kind of sneaks his way through. And that's a monster pressure. They weren't trying to allow him back by that quickly. That's not ideal. And with that, it forces Justin Fields to get rid of the football, right? He can fake it. It's not there, throw it away or take off. But because Bugs is there and he won so immediately, now he's got to throw the football. And he ends up deciding to just kind of throw it up. But that was in his face. Yes, Will was there, but that guy was in his face. So he ends up just kind of tossing it up there. And Okuda just sitting back in his own coverage, eyes on the quarterback the entire time, ends up making the play. And he takes it to the house. Oh, Hutch with a little bit of a block. Okay, I see you. Had to point that out. Now on this play, Alex and CJ are kind of going to fill in the same spot. And they give us an issue because they have this tight end who kind of wraps around here with the snap. And he's actually going to take Mike Hughes. Now Mike Hughes is free right now. He was matched up with him originally. Now he's clean. So you could say, okay, well, he can just contain. But he can't if this guy comes back over and runs around underneath. He's got to pick that up. But as you're going to see here, CJ Moore and Alex basically end up filling the same gap. And no one actually has contained once that happens. And I think that shifted us because as you can see, when they motion over, CJ Moore gets inside or head up with the tight end with the outside tight end they have two tight ends on this right side meanwhile he was originally outside of that so once this motion moves now as you can see he goes inside of it thinking okay Mike Hughes has the edge on this play but because he comes back over he dives inside and as you're going to see Mike Hughes doesn't have the edge because this dude comes back over the tight end comes back so now there's no one out here to contain it's a really cool play design it looks like Alex is filling this b gap I mean, basically, and Hutchinson is filling two gaps here working against the tight end. I mean, but he could probably wall off and fill the C gap. But as you're going to see uh, on the outside, that CJ Moore, he kind of dives inside here. So, yeah, they just basically end up filling two places at once. You're going to see, and no one actually has contained. And I think that motion really threw him off. And, you know, hey, CJ Moore, he hasn't played a ton for us. Could have been on him. Could have been on Alex. Um, but either way, yeah, you can see what happened. They didn't do it every time, but they were putting Hutchinson in a lot of the action offensively, a lot of the zone read action. They would have him, and they would, of course, have 
have to make that decision between quarterback, running back. But the Lions seem to do, not all the time, but they seem to mix it in as they would try to slant, like for example, John Kaminsky, who maybe doesn't have that same athleticism in space. They would slant him inside. That way they could spill around the outside and have a guy with a little bit more speed trying to contain that side. Meanwhile, Hutchinson was putting a lot more of the action with the zone reads. But on this play, like we saw earlier, they're actually going to bring Will Harris off the edge. This is the second on an eight. They're going to bring him on a slot cornerback blitz. Again, they're going to slant inside because of that. And then, of course, Alex can fill. And then, of course, Will Harris gets in there. They get some penetration. Isaiah Bugs gets way upfield. But then it's on the backside. Hutchinson, to me, makes a saving tackle here because, again, if he misses this, this thing could potentially break. But as you're going to see, so they slant inside. Oh, it's frozen. This gets upfield very quickly. Good penetration. But this is a big-time tackle here. And then, of course, Will Harris just keeps working and brings up this third down. And on this third down, that was a, a two-yard pickup. It brings up a third down and five. They do something that you saw a lot on the film, which was the rollouts. Now, again, the Lions were blitzing sometimes off the edge here. In this case, they don't. They have it manned up across the board. Kirby has a tight end. Will Harris, Jerry Jacobs are playing at a little bit of different levels here. But look at Jerry Jacobs. As we talk about his press ability, Aaron Glenn loves his cornerbacks challenging. And I think this is a good example of that. Challenging off the line of scrimmage, getting in his hip. And because of this, they don't actually switch this route off. Okay, usually this can create potentially like a rub and create space. It actually almost works against them because Jerry Jacobs doesn't give up any space. He gets up right in the hip of this outside receiver, St. Brown, on this play. And he actually runs him into the other receiver. Will Harris then has depth to kind of just sit back on it and take it away once it gets his direction with Mooney. And you can see that's where Will Harris's or Jerry Jacobs' ability to get that physical off the line comes into play. And I thought that would be an area where they maybe wouldn't test us. And they didn't test us a ton here. They didn't do a ton of rollouts against us. And this was the third and five. This is the kind of things that they do. Jeff Okuda just chasing it down the back end. Those are the kind of plays that they run. But they didn't test us a ton on those. And as you can see, that's probably part of the reason because physically, Mike Hughes kind of fall in the same boat. Jeff Okuda, but especially Jerry Jacobs, he's not really one guy you want to test with that. And they end up also containing on this play the tight end stays in the block so Kirby gets out there everybody contains and then on the back side you can see Isaiah Bugs and Aiden Hutchinson they end up cleaning this up third down and five and they get off the field this is kind of exactly what I just said putting Aiden Hutchinson in a lot of the action defensively again you slant in a guy like John Kaminsky and then you put in the action uh, Aiden Hutchinson on the back side with Derek Barnes filling around and then there goes uh, Aiden Hutchinson they limit it to a five-yard gain Maybe a little bit inside on that one, but that's what I was talking about. Second and five, Jeff Okuda, this is where he clamps up Ch Chase Claypool. This was this was beautiful coverage from him on this play. Now, this is a cover three drop, actually, with uh, C.J. Moore in the box. Cover three, Sky look defensively. This was not man across the board, but, of course, like man on the outside. So he's one-on-one. -on -one. He's basically playing man. You can see only one receiver on his side. They're playing a little bit more zone on this side. But just take a look at him. I mean, he's in his hip. Oh my goodness, like he absolutely clamped up Chase, Chase Claypool. There is zero separation over top. He's clean with his hands on this one. Gets a little bit of contact there. Gets in his hip, gets his head around beautifully. He almost picked that ball off. That was fantastic cover from Jeff Okuda, and he was having a good day. That was beautiful from Jeff Okuda on that play. That, that thing is just beautiful. Okay, a little bit of a push there from Hutchinson, but beautiful coverage. More man across the board here. This was third and five, but unfortunately we picked up a uh, defensive holding on Chris Board. Gets, it's always tough to tell how physical they actually were from this point of view. Kirby here in the slot, and then you have Will, and you also have, of course, at the top of the screen, you have Jerry Jacobs, or Mike Hughes, excuse me. He's in a really good spot defensively. You got your single high deep safety. Uh, Jeff Okuda takes the tight end, kind of just delayed here as Chris Board takes the running back. They end up containing. Julian Okwara does a good job containing, as well as Charles Harris. Really. Now, I understand they don't do a lot of spying, but here it kind of looks like Duracell is doing that. Here in the hole, he kind of has his eyes just on Justin Fields. But notice how they play on a string, right? You have the defensive end there and Charles Harris. Be physical with the tight end. And then as Justin Fields, the lane opens up, he attacks downhill. That leads to Aiden Hutchinson kind of dropping back. And then all of a sudden, you have Alex Anzalone, who's also containing. So... All the attention wasn't always just get up field, get up field, get up field. It was keep this dude in the pocket and slowly kind of collapse when your opportunity invites itself. He dropped into a cover three. It looked like defensively, not man coverage. Who'd actually ran into uh, the tight end on this play. I mean, it worked out perfectly for us, right? But they're dropping in a zone coverage here. And Jeff Okuda's kind of carrying, I guess, his receiver across the field. He ends up running into uh, this cornerback coming across. Drag route, it feels a little weird that he would try to carry this route. Um, and he does. 
And meanwhile, in doing that, he runs into their tight end. Definitely wasn't on purpose, but to force Justin to just kind of throw the ball, try to throw it away and hold on to it, but it ends up just falling on the ground. Maybe that's how they have them do it on the single side. This was a big time sack that he made. Line drop into what looks like a little bit of a cover six look here defensively. And Hutchinson wins very quickly. They get good depth from their linebackers, but it's really about he gets there pretty darn quickly on this play with the four man rush. Again, they bring the slot corner off the edge. So you actually get a five man rush here with Will Harris. So they only have two underneath defenders. The cover six look kind of protecting over top. And what seems to be key here is that Aiden Hutchinson doesn't have a lot of ways that he can win here. Ali McNeil is going to release to the right shoulder of this offensive guard. And they're going to kind of move and try to force the slide of this offensive line with Isaiah Bugs. Then they're going to run their game and then kind of fade out and contain. Meanwhile, in the backside, John Kaminsky is going to play straight up field in this offensive tackle. For Hutchinson, he doesn't have a clear two-way go because there will be guard help because of Aleem's first step. So he's basically got to play through this guy so that they can collapse the pocket. He does that and still wins very quickly for the kind of the rush lanes here, contain him on the side with a little bit more of a speed guy and Will Harris, but then also getting the pressure one-on-ones everywhere and Hutchinson gets that he goes to the bull rush kind of long arms and then sheds let's go and sheds off and then he finishes off Justin Fields here but look at Hutchinson here boom with the win I mean that is timely that was a quick win yeah you see that live and you're like oh, okay he just held the ball too long like that is a quick win it is a quick win uh, for Aiden Hutchinson. Last play of the game for the Lions defense. They go with a cover one look. They kind of rob down, take away this dig route, which Mike Hughes in this in this situation actually has that. We know he can cover those type of routes because he has played that slot cornerback for us. Will Harris covers up this fade really cleanly, and then it's on the bottom here with Jeff Okuda, who's working on a deep double move, and he's all over it. There's really not a lot of separation in the back end, but you also get some pressure, and they were, we were giving some exotic looks, but at the same time, making sure we stay disciplined in our rush lanes. That way, we didn't give him some clear places to just take off. They said they don't believe in spies. Well, without using a spy, they were able to keep him in the pocket, and that's well done. you got to give him credit for that because in some of these situations, yeah, he escaped a couple times, but the majority of the time, they did pretty well by giving a lot of different looks and not actually having like a, a spy. So, they load up one side of the field, this right side, to that receiver side. They bring four guys. Chris boards match with running back but then they strut, stunt around Hutchison who kind of becomes that spy on this left side Charles Harris working one-on-one -on -one. They're also creating a two-way goal for Charles Harris because of Board's alignment pre-snap and then having Hutchinson fly over. That way there's not a lane that Fields can run through just because Charles doesn't win. So they're creating that inside, outside, and through lane for Charles to win. He doesn't get the win. And then it's Alex Anzalone who actually pops through free here, not Julian Okora. But I think a big part of this is that because you're lining all these guys up on one side and Julian and, and this guard, excuse me, gets a little bit of a touch on Hutchinson, but Julian Okora gets a one-on-one -on -one with the tight end. He goes right at the tight end. And because of that, the tackle is going to slide over to help, not trying to leave him on an island with a tight end because usually defense members tight end. That's just a matter of time before he's going to be beat. So he slides over to help. He actually leaves Alex Anzalone who just gets upfield. And then he just sneaks underneath. And it's Alex Anzalone who becomes clean. Julian who keeps battling. They don't get the sack there. Then they end up actually finishing off with Julian Okwara. Actually, they don't tackle him. But it was well done. Oh, they do tackle him. Okay, Julian threw him down. But... That was well done. I like how they stayed in their rush lanes. Give different pressure looks, but stay in their rush lanes. So I think that was a good example of what they're talking about when they say that. We don't believe in spies. Well, that's kind of, I guess, what they're talking about. And it wasn't perfect. There was a lot of chunks gave up in this game. A lot of things that I skipped over, good and bad, in this one. But uh, the point is, is that, again, when they need it most, they got off the field. And you got another team this week who differently, going to do it differently, but they run the football a lot. And Saquon is a dog, just like Jerry Jacobs is apparently a dog, according to Aaron Glenn. We know he's a dog. With that, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out.